What's up guys, Jeremy here. Um, here to talk to you a little bit uh, about some general diving strategy and etiquette. And as you can see below, I have this document um, that I wrote up and I just wanted to talk to you and let you know kind of where I was coming from when I wrote this document. Um, essentially, I have some divers uh, that I coach that are varsity divers who don't have coaches and I have some kids that just wanna learn a little bit more about the sport and uh, hopefully become more independent athletes, which I always think is a good thing, you know? At the end of the day, you're in charge of your own success. It's not your coach, it's not your parents, it's up to you. So the more that you know and the better educated you are, the better chance you have at achieving your goals or hopefully scoring higher. So um, this is a, a, hopefully will be a resource for, you know, divers that are going into varsity or just getting started or even people that um, have been diving for a little while. These are some things that I learned throughout my career diving and coaching um, that I think would benefit uh, a lot of divers that I coach and any other you know divers that are just getting into it and looking to learn a little bit more. So starting out, our number one goal in diving is to score the most amount of points possible. So the more points you score, better chance you have at you know, getting a personal best, um, better chance you have at coming in first place, which is always nice, um, and better chance you have at achieving your goals. So um, number one, score the most amount of points possible. I can't stress that enough. I think a lot of people jump to doing cool dives or doing dives that they enjoy a lot or dives that look cool to their friends instead of thinking about what dives can I do that will score me the most amount of points. Doing cool dives and doing fun dives are always good. Um, you should try to limit those to practice or meets that don't matter as much. But you know when you have a meet where you need to score some points and score some points for your team or you're, you're going for a, you know, a state cut or nationals or something like that, you should really be sticking to the dives that are going to put you in the best position to score. So with that in mind, list progression is also something that people should have in mind, you know, in the backs of their heads of, of where they should be going. Um, this, I, I'm, gonna, I'm basically just walking through this document here. Excuse me. This list progression is something that people will be achieving throughout their careers. This is not something that you're just going to, you know, put in like on, in your list right now, um, especially if you haven't been diving for very long. So just to start out, um, this is just a general idea of a list progression. Um, so first, pretend you're here and you've never dove ever in your life before. You're going to start out with a voluntary list. A voluntary list is five dives. You have to have one dive for, or one dive from every category. So front is one, two is back, three is reverse, four is inward, five is twister. So you have to have one dive from all five of those categories to have a voluntary list. Um, when you compete 11 dives, that voluntary list has to be under, uh, under a 9.0 degree of difficulty. So that's going um, later on. But you know, getting, getting started, you're not going to have a trouble with that. But you want to get one dive from every category. So after we get done with our voluntary list and we have our you know, front one and a half, hopefully back dive, reverse dive, inward dive, and then a twister, maybe back somersault half twist, or back dive half twist, or front flip full twist, something simple, simple like that. Um, we have our voluntary list set, then we're gonna start adding to our list by adding optionals. So optionals are our additional dives. So um, the goal is eventually to get to a one and a half list. Um, that would, I would say anybody that's you know, watching this video, you should be, that should be your goal. Um, the one and a half list is an asset to you because now you have lots of hand first, hands first entries. Hands first entries are great because you can control your splash. If you can't control your splash, um, it makes it more difficult to score, going back to our initial goal. So um, feet first entries are fine. People do them. I've done them. Uh, lots of my divers do them. Um, but it's a goal to get to the hand first entries if you can because it's a little bit easier to mitigate splash. We, we do lots of drill work on uh, entries and stuff. And so the more work we can do um, to get to those one and a half and two and a half lists, the better because it's obviously more hand first entries. So. So let's say we have front, uh, let's say we're doing front double or front two and a half. So our one and a half, it's, one and a half list generally refers to um, all your back reverse and inward. So you're, you would like to have, for a one and a half list, you'd like to have a back one and a half, a reverse one and a half, and an inward one and a half. Again, all going in on our hands. Um, and then once we get through that and we have um, our front optional as well, hopefully we're going to have something going in on our hands for our twisters as well. So maybe back one and a half half twist or front one and a half full twist. Those are generally um, the first ones we go to. Um, then from there, as we have 
you know, got in our tuck list and we are putting it in, in, in well, hopefully sixes and above, then we should start, you know, graduating to our pike list. So um, working on preps and pike, so doing reverse flip pike, back flip pike, inward somersault pike, um, and then hopefully working into our front one, or our one and a half pike list, so back one and a half pike, reverse one and a half pike, inward one and a half pike. Again, this is only if it's going to put us in a better position to score. Our number one goal, again, is to score. If our one and a half tuck list looks like crap, chances are we shouldn't be doing a one and a half pike list. We should be perfecting our tucks, working on kickouts, um, you know, putting these down for good scores because there's no reason to move on. If you can't put that one and a half tuck list on uh, down, you shouldn't be moving on to pikes. Um, and then from there, this is, you know, again, throughout the uh, a diver's career. So not many high school divers have a two and a half tuck list. Um, on one meter, and three meters is a little bit more realistic to do that. A lot of high school and college divers have a two and a half tuck list on three meter, and then eventually the two and a half pike list. And same idea, it's just you know back, reverse, and inward um, will be in pike or, or two and a half. All right. So now that we talked a little bit about um, the progressions, I'd like to just talk a little bit more about list strategy. So when I say strategy, I mean what can I do to help my team perform to the best of their abilities. So um, another thing, so going back to what we were talking about scoring, scoring is always good, um, but I also think that doing dives that you would like to be competing in competition is also good. So like I have divers who love to do, um, you know, front one and a half uh, in practice and they practice it all the time. And then the, you know, the backs and reverse dives, they don't like doing that much and then they don't compete them in the meets. And then when they actually need them at the end of the season for their 11 dive meets, they haven't practiced them like at all the entire season. So when they get to those meets, they're not super comfortable with them. And then they obviously don't perform them as well. So my goal is for people to compete the dives that they're going to need at the end of the season, throughout the season, as much as they possibly can. But again, this is also balanced out with what can you do to score and what does your team need? So going back to list strategy, Let's say you're going into a meet and, you know, I, and I have this written down here. Let's say you're going into a meet and your best dive score for the season is 260 and you re do some research and you find out the diver on the other team has, you know, his best is 250. You probably shouldn't be, you know, going out there chucking new dives just because you need them at the end of the season, especially if it's going to be, you know, a, a chance that you would lose the meet. So hopefully you're, you're doing your best to win um, and put your team in a good position to win, I mean, I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, the dual meets don't matter as much, but um, you should be putting yourself in a position to win just, you know, psychologically, that's good to be winning. Um, also, you know, I mean, maybe it might not be a huge deal if you don't win to you, but if your team needs those couple extra points to eke out and uh, hopefully beat the other team, hopefully you're not the one that's sabotaging the team's performance by, you know, being selfish and doing dives that you probably shouldn't have been doing at the meet. So for the six and 11 dive um, meet strategy and list strategy, uh, I, don't, I don't wanna say too much about that. I think I, I um, explained those pretty well. Um, you know, just, I think one of the biggest things is, is just knowing when you're supposed to go at a meet is huge. I can't stress this enough. Like it's the most embarrassing thing ever. Like it's happened to me as a coach. Um, I'm sure it's happened to me as a diver, but like when they call your name, like Jeremy, 103C and you're not ready to go, um, it's embarrassing and stresses you out, stresses your coaches out. Everybody's annoyed at you because you're taking everybody else's time. So know when you're supposed to go, be ready to go, be in the zone, get ready to go. Um, going back to uh, high school lists here, so we have six and 11 dive lists. You know, I, I wrote you know everything out, so you should be trying to compete your vol or your optionals as much as possible throughout the season. Um, so hopefully you, you, you try to stick with your five main optionals. Um, depending on your skill level, this may change because if you're getting new dives, this may change, but if you're, you know, getting towards, uh, you know, more of a plateau as far as um, the dives that you're going to stick with. So let's say you have your full one and a half list. Um, hopefully you're sticking with your one and a half list throughout the season. And then if you want to start messing with pikes and stuff, that's okay in practices, but you should really be sticking to um, a, a, a certain list so that you can hopefully perform those dives the best of your ability at the end of the season. Um, and same with the 11 dive lists as well. Um, you should be trying to it really shouldn't be a lot of changes in between meets. You should be trying to, you know, get yourself into a rhythm, compete the same dives in the same orders, unless you find that the, the order that you uh, chose is not a good order for you or you didn't make it to the last round because you got cut. Um, 
you know, change things up if you have to, but if you don't have to, try to keep things the same so you can hopefully groove the feeling of lists. You know, it's all about feeling. I think that's athletics in general with trying to make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can when it comes to that, that time. So when you have a really intense situation where you're at you know, sectionals or states and you need to pull out that last dive, um, hopefully you've been in that position before, you've done this dive 100 times, you've done it in the same order, you're used to it, you know, you're in the zone and you can go out and execute that dive to the best of your ability. So uh, I talked about most of this document here. Um, I think that we're in a pretty good spot. I just wanted to highlight a couple other things, things that I've learned throughout my time diving and coaching um, and things that hopefully will you know, increase the uh, likelihood of you having fun at these meets and, you know, hopefully increase the likelihood of you competing to your uh, level of ability at these meets as well. Um, so just a few things. So I have, I have be, uh, be mindful and friendly uh, and be a good sport. Um, so when you're at these meets, try not to get down in the dumps. Like I understand that, um, you know, it can be difficult. And I said this in there too, you know, the, the best divers have short memories and they talk about this. This is like for lots of sports. Um, and uh, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, like all those guys, like they talk about, you know, you know, they take a shot. If they, it's a terrible shot, doesn't matter. It's in the past. You can't do anything about it. Move on. And, it, and it's so easy to say that. And I've been there and it's very, very difficult to do that. But again, as long as you have this in your head and you're thinking about these things, you're putting yourself in a position to hopefully get better and improve. So um, I know it's difficult, but do your best when you have those tough shots or, or when you have those tough dives. Uh, maybe you, you, you belly flop on one, you fail a dive, or you balk, or something like that. Something catastrophic happens. It's not the end of the world. Other people are going to screw up. It's okay. Do your best. Move on to the next dive and just keep chugging. Um, have fun. You know, it, this is a great time. Like, I, I think um, we take things so seriously, especially I, I remember in high school thinking like this was like, I, I treated like, I treated like, I treated diving like it was my job. Like I, I was, so, I used to get so stressed out at meets, um, especially in high school. Uh, just took them so so seriously. I, this is something I have as for not to do. Like I, I literally used to like bring my laptop and I would have like an Excel sheet and like after every single one of my dives, I would, like try to remember my scores and then I would like put them in and like add up my scores in between every dive. And like that is like probably one of the worst things you can do because now you're like trying to like so like my goal was my big goal in high school was to make states and so this was like my sophomore junior year where i was like kind of close but not really like i wasn't close enough where i should have been adding up scores like you're never you should never be adding up scores anyway because like that's you shouldn't be thinking about that um but yeah i would just add up scores between every time and then I'd be like okay now i need like a six and a half and a seven on this next dive like like i'm i can i could control that you know so just go out there dive to the best of your ability have fun like just relax you know enjoy the moment, enjoy being there with your friends and your coaches. Um, and I, I guarantee there's going to be some of the fondest memories that you, you look back on um, and try not to stress yourself out so much with the nitty gritty. And if you need a fight, like I can't, like I can tell you for a fact right now, like I don't remember a lot of the scores that I ever had. I, I can remember like, I can remember one score probably for my entire diving career. And that was my senior year of high school when I made States. And I think it was a 412. Um, and it, it used to be a different score back then. Uh, it's different now. It's 440. Um, but I remember making that score. But like none of the other scores, I don't remember any of them. So you know, keep, take that to heart. Um, you're not going to remember them 10 years from now or five years from now. Or I'm only you know two or three years out from college right now, and I don't remember any of my college scores. So have fun, enjoy. Um, that's that's really it. just you know stay in the moment. Like you're going to have a lot of fun. Um, there's no reason to stress out and, and uh, make it so hard on yourself. So something else I think that would be really good for all of you um, and something that I was actually very good at, you know, not to toot my own horn, but this came from me not having a high school coach um, and something like my dad taught me when I was really young was just trying to be very observant, especially when you are not so good at something and you see a lot of people that are really good at something. If you just like shut up and pay attention, and you can learn so much. Like I think in high school... Oh man, like my first, you know, two, three years, like where I didn't really have much of a coach there, but like, just like, I loved having meets because meets were a chance for me to watch coaches coach other divers. And like, you can learn so much from just watching other coaches coach divers. Cause like chances are they have very similar flaws to what you're you, like troubles to what you're having. You know, like, I don't think everybody has unique problems. We all have the same problems. People don't get their arms up fast enough. They don't throw hard enough or, you know, their, their hurdles are, you know, too short, too long, they're jumping too far, things like that. So um, 
just paying attention at meets and, and listening and looking and watching other divers, watching divers that are good, seeing what they do between dives. Like I dove with Manny Pollard back in the day in high school and he was the state champion. He has the state record still. Um, and I remember watching him at meets, like, like, you know, watching what he did between dives, you know, he was always just like so carefree and relaxed. And like, those were, uh, you know, emotions that I really tried to <clears throat> evoke myself because I noticed that, you know, he seemed so relaxed at these meets, um, you know, he didn't really care and he kicked everybody's butts by like 100 points. Um, and I think if you can try to pull that, you know, warrior mindset, that champion mindset in to yourself, you can, you know, I, by no means was I the best diver, but I think by just, you know, trying to apply those things to myself while I was out there on the diving board, that helped me a lot. Um, and I think that if you guys could do that, it would help you a lot as well. The final couple things I just want to say is like, number one, when you are at a meet, I would say try to do your best to keep distractions to a minimum. So the biggest thing I can say for all of us in this, this day and age is put your phone away when you're at a meet, especially 11 dive meets. Like I know it's hard because it's a long meet and stuff, but really try not to be texting or calling people. Not that anybody calls anybody anymore, but like try not to be texting or calling people in between uh, dives, try not to be, you know, on Snapchat or Instagram and all that stuff. Like put your phone on airplane mode, shut the Wi-Fi off. If you have music on your phone, that's great. If you're using your phone for music or, you know, whatever, that's fine. Um, I think that's really good and having your routine is really good, but trying to minimize distractions. And um, I think if you can just, like, if you can just focus, I know it's like four hours long, that four hours long and that's like a long time for people to focus nowadays. But like, if you can just focus for those four hours, I think you will do monumentally better at your dive meets than other people um and you know and just yourself if you know if you can just stay in the zone and focus on what you need to, the task at hand the things that you need to do you'll do so much better um like having your head in the clouds and not thinking about the dives that you have or not knowing when you need to go will, will, will hurt you um and then finally along with that just sticking to your routine sticking to what you do i think it's very easy especially like, so going back to what i was saying before about looking at other divers and stuff I think it's easy for us to copy other people and like copying people to an extent is not bad, I don't think, especially if they're better than you and you're trying to uh, live up to that standard. Um, but there's also, there's a line there as well. I think, um, you know, once you come up with a routine, try to stick to your own kind of routine, don't change things. Um, especially try not to change things, you know, the day of the meet, you know, if you want to slowly change things, that's fine, but really try to stick to your routine. So like, you know, I used to like, you know, hop in the water, especially 11 dive meets, I would hop in the water like a few dives before because I didn't like to be too dry. So I'd like, you know, then I'd towel off a little bit, you know, I'd have my music. Um, but yeah, you know, just whatever comes to mind to you or whatever is natural for you, you know, especially if you're getting started, you're not going to know exactly what your routine is, but you're going to build up a routine over time. And if the, you know, the best that you can stick to that, um, the more comfortable you'll be when it comes to those, you know, intense moments. So like when you have, you know, that moment at States where you need to hit this dive to win the state championship, um, hopefully, first of all, you've been prepared, you're prepared, which I'm sure you are if you're there. Uh, number two, the more, the, you know, the more comfortable you can be and the more familiar the moment can be, the better you're off you're going to do. Um, so I think if you can say like, you know, have your headphones in listening to the same song, like before you go up and do that dive, if you can put yourself in that moment and try to be in the same moment you've been in, in the past and just kind of relive that moment, um, that will help you perform better. So. Um, these are just a couple tips that I had. Uh, if you have questions, please let me know. I'd love to talk about this stuff, as you can tell. Um, and, you know, if I can go into more detail on anything, I would love to. Um, but these are just a few things, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you get something out of them. Go kick some butt on the boards. Good luck. Bye.